Since I was a kid growing up at the height of the Cold War, I've been fascinated by the deepest, darkest secrets of our government. What weren't they telling us? Some people believe there's a huge government secret hiding right beneath our feet. An entire network of military bases and top secret facilities under the ground. But is there any evidence of this massive subterranean layer? Is something going on down there that we don't know about? Absolutely. We know that the military started moving underground during the Cold War, back in the 50s and 60s. That's the end of the world right there. And rumors that started in 1955 about an underground base called Area 51 were only confirmed by the FBI in 2013. This is intense. But some suspicious line items in the military budget. There's about $50 billion for classified programs. And even more suspicious patents that were purchased by the federal government. They're using heat to tunnel through and melt rock. Oh, man! This is science fiction to me. Could indicate that there's way more happening beneath the surface than we ever imagined. Patrolled by military dog teams, that is top secret stuff. So I'm headed deep into the underworld. Go, go, go! To see what I can find out. The eagle has landed. And this is just the beginning. Right beneath our feet, there are cities. Hidden by time, they hold the clues that could rewrite history. Into the abyss, huh? I'm Don Wildman, and my mission is to explore the farthest and deepest reaches of our planet using cutting edge technology. How cool is that? To dig into the greatest mysteries of our past going deep into the cities of the underworld. I used to go to grade school, and just like fire drills, we would do duck and cover drills, which were for nuclear attack, which was ridiculous when you consider the fact that no way is anybody surviving this thing, much less eight-year-olds with their jackets over their heads in the basement. But those are the kinds of things that were part of life in the 50s and the 60s. The imminence of nuclear holocaust is much less a daily thought on the average American's mind today than it was when I was young. The Cold War is long over, but some declassified relics from that era may show that the nuclear threat from Russia was just the beginning of a secret underground that only top-level officials in the government know about. Usually, when I go into the underworld, I'm rappelling into murky caves or squeezing through tight crevices in some ancient ruin. But this is gonna be different. An underground world built in secrecy with high-level military technology and I couldn't be more excited. My first stop is in the Arizona desert at one of the many decommissioned Titan II missile sites that exist across the country. Wow, it smells like a military based on this. Yes. These missile silos were underground structures built during the Cold War, constructed to house an arsenal of nuclear warheads to deter the Russian threat. And it was all done in total secrecy. Wow. This is intense. How far underground are we at this point? We're 35 feet. Wow. You worked in the silo. Yes, during the height of the Cold War. What was that like? What did that feel like? It was boring and scary at the same time. Kind of had the weight of the world on your shoulders. You were aware of that feeling? Absolutely. Interesting. David Horatunian was a Titan II ballistic missile analyst during the Cold War. His job was to wait for this phone to ring, and if it did, he'd put this key 
into this switch and launch a nuclear attack. And if it happened, it would have all taken less than 60 seconds. How crazy is that? So your day of work was to make sure that this thing was up and ready to go? State of readiness, 24 okay. hours a day. You thought you could launch at any moment. But the thing that was most upsetting about it was if we had the launch order, we knew an attack was coming, and we knew that all our loved ones would die. Mm. The Titan II was built in 1961, when a telephone looked like this, a television looked like this, and a baby's car seat looked something like this. And yet, this secret underground facility had some insanely cool technology. So this is the long cable way. Ooh, that's amazing. This thing is built to be like a slinky, so we can move up and down, side to side. We had to be protected from the shock wave. It's yeah. gonna be like the world's worst earthquake if a nuclear detonation went off. Right, right. And it's a cable way because it's all the cables coming from the control center to the missile. The cable way is a massive version of the shocks in your car, designed to protect this entire underground base from any nuclear explosions above. So you're down there, 200 and some feet away from the rocket, which is up here. This is the silo, and this is the launch tube, and the missile sits in the launch tube, protected by that extremely heavy door. Man, that's hard. Door push. Ah. Oh, my lord. Look at that. That's crazy. Incredible. Wow. There you go. So give me some read on what I'm looking at here. It's 103 feet tall. It weighs 330,000 pounds fully loaded. Mm -hmm. It has 430,000 pounds of thrust, which is equivalent to two 747s of full throttle. Wow. How fast does it take for this to get to its target in the Soviet? About 30 minutes. It's going to go about 17,000 miles an hour. Wow. To put into perspective how ridiculously fast this Titan missile was, the commercial airplanes we fly in today, they go around 570 miles per hour top speed. So this nuclear missile flies about 30 times faster. And what is the actual bomb? It's a nine megaton bomb, which is equivalent to nine million tons of TNT. How does that compare to Hiroshima? It's 600 times more powerful Jesus. than Hiroshima. Unbelievable. And how many facilities with this nuclear missile were ready to go on a single phone call? 54. That's crazy. Absolutely. So in the case of nuclear attack, 54 Titan II missiles all lift off basically at the same time. Only totally retaliatory, not a first strike weapon. If the Soviet Union launched against us, this was the deterrent, mutually assured destruction. The 54 Titans were gonna wipe out 54 of their cities or military bases. Yeah, or... that's where it just enters into a whole nother realm. I mean, it's, it's just hard to conceive of that much destruction. And today, even more so. Today, more so, there's more of them, and they're more accurate. Wow. So we're at the top of the, of the missile. How far down is the bottom? The bottom's 146 feet down. That's insane. This is where the engines would sit. Man, and that's the, that's the end of the world right there. This once top secret underground base was built in 1960. And the public had no idea that we had 54 weapons of mass destruction hidden deep below ground until 30 years later. So what else could our government be hiding today? One thing that caught the attention of the public was some very covert government activity in remote parts of the American West. Back in the 50s, the government prohibited the public from entering a fenced-off region of the Nevada desert called Area 51. Around the same time, there were numerous sightings of unidentified flying objects nearby. And so the theories began. They're conducting experiments on aliens, or reverse engineering a downed spacecraft. And the theories get wilder and wilder the deeper you go down the wormhole. 
flying saucers exist. Mankind should be alarmed. One thing we certainly know is that the government denied Area 51's existence until a Freedom of Information Act request in 2013. They admitted that since the 1950s, an underground base at Area 51 has been developing secret weapons and spy planes. So what about the aliens? We may never know. Because all current activities at the base are classified. And the government seems to be remarkably good at keeping secrets. So what I'm curious about is what else is hiding down there? And how massive could a US secret underground actually be? There you go. Warning, US Air Force installation unlawful to enter. Patrolled by military dog teams. That is Nellis Air Force Base right in there. But we're not going inside, because <laughs> this, this fence defines the whole perimeter of the place. This is one of many military installations throughout the state. Top secret stuff. Just a quick dune buggy trip outside of Las Vegas takes us to this location which may be the origin of our government's fascination with secret underground operations. In the early 50s, this is where some of the first nuclear weapons were developed and tested. Back in Vegas, the mushroom clouds were so visible that a new phenomenon known as atomic tourism exploded on the strip. Restaurants and bars would organize happy hour watching parties. So the tourists were having a blast, but eventually the nuclear explosions were also enjoyed by enemy satellites. And the U.S. feared that Russia was collecting valuable intel about our nuclear capabilities. So the military took the entire operation underground, performing nuclear tests below. This site is still operational, but you'd never know it from above ground and only a classified few know the true scope of the operations. But locals have reported military vehicles disappearing into the earth. And there's rumors of a network of hidden labs and tunnels stretching for miles in every direction. There you go. You got military here and you've got this theory that the underground is more than meets the eye. We can't go in here and we can't know quite possibly what's under there till we go looking for it. I'm wondering if there's any modern technology that might show whether this secret military underworld could actually exist. We found out after the Cold War that the US government constructed top secret missile silos and nuclear testing facilities underground. Now, 70 years later, some believe that these operations still exist and that there might be even larger underground bases the public doesn't know about. It's fascinating, but is it possible? To learn more about how one of these underground bases could actually be constructed, I've come to Fort Wayne, Indiana to explore the underworld with Lance Waddell chief engineer of the Three Rivers Tunnel Project to get an idea of how these underground bases could be made. The eagle has landed. Is it even possible to do a gigantic engineering project underground in total secrecy? You don't really get the perspective until you're down here. How deep is this thing? About 240 feet. My lord. And this is just the beginning. What's that? That is St. Barbara. We always have her underground where the work is because she's the, the patron saint of miners. How worried are you about things going wrong? You get used to it after a while. <laughs> well, look at you. <laughs> you can deal with it. Hear that rumbling sound? That's the locomotive coming out. That's our ride. I didn't buy a ticket, but OK. Good, Martin. The 
The tunnel system that Lance and his team are digging is five miles long and 19 feet in diameter, running nearly 20 stories below the surface. When it's done, 850 billion gallons of sewage overflow will run through it every year, instead of into one of the three rivers above. While this isn't a secret government tunnel, I'd like to find out how they're building this public project to see if you could even dig a tunnel system like this without anyone above ground knowing about it. So we're heading straight into the belly of the beast. Whoa! My bad. Following you. Everything we're seeing is the machine itself. It's basically a, a 400 foot long worm working itself through the earth. And as it goes, it's building its own tunnel behind it. I'm actually inside the TBM, the tunnel boring machine, that's used to dig this kind of massive tunnel. This thing is longer than a football field. And the machine actually constructs the tunnel as it moves through the earth. This is a probe drill. So the machine cuts a 19 foot diameter hole. OK. There are seven of these motors. And when they're all pushing, driving that machine, yep. it's up to 8.4 million pounds of force. Wow. So what happens to the rock it carves away? As the rock is cut up, it falls into the bottom of the excavation chamber. And it's mixed with water slurry mix. And it's pumped all the way to the surface, and then hauled out. Tons and tons of debris. About 35 tons an hour. Really? The huge cutting face is obviously an effective tool when it comes to digging a tunnel. But 35 tons of debris an hour being shot back up to the surface would make it impossible to dig a network like this in secret. To get rid of all that debris, you'd need an endless parade of dump trucks hauling the rubble away. Between that and the expansive worksite itself, enemies could easily monitor a tunnel project from spy satellites. So looking into this theory that the US government and military have a top secret network of underground bases, they need to create a very different technology, one that doesn't produce a mountain of debris on the surface. As far as I know, there's no drill that can make rock and dirt evaporate into thin air. Or is there? Method and apparatus for tunneling by melting. Since the 1950s, the US government has built underground structures and kept them secret from the public. In the last 70 years, we found out about a few. But the Cold War kid in me wants to know what else they could be hiding beneath our feet. We've seen that the method of tunneling used for public projects would be impossible to keep secret. So I'm meeting up with David Childress, an author and researcher, who spent decades looking into the deepest, darkest secrets of the US government. David says he may have the smoking gun that shows how the secret underworld is being built. All around the Nellis Air Force Base and Area 51 is a vast network of tunnels. And many of these tunnels are in the base, but some of these tunnels and entrances go outside the base. Since the 1950s, the Locals in that area have reported seeing convoys of, of military vehicles driving down the road and then just suddenly disappearing. Hmm. On one hand, it doesn't surprise me. It's a military base. It's very secretive. And, and it's huge, too. Right. What I want to know is, could someone create a massive underground base without anybody knowing about it? They do have the technology. This is a 1972 patent from DARPA. United States patent, September 26, 1972. Method and apparatus for tunneling by melting. Melting? So they're using heat to, to actually tunnel. They're using heat to, to tunnel through and melt rock. In a normal tunneling device, you would have a lot of rubble coming out the back. Yeah, yeah. And you would need tons of trucks and things like that to haul all this rubble out. Of course, yeah. But with the thermonuclear tunneling device, you don't need that. It's very clean. 
Uh, it doesn't create a lot of waste and rubble. It sounds science fiction to me. I mean, it's, this is sci-fi stuff. So each mile of the tunnel, 20 feet in diameter, creates enough rubble to fill 18 Olympic-sized swimming pools. But according to this patent, which was purchased by the US government, huge tunnels can be dug deep underground with zero debris. Here's how it works. The nuclear reactor inside heats the drill tip to over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Six hydraulic cylinders with 18 million pounds of thrust push the drill through the earth, turning all of the rock into glass that lines the walls of the tunnel. This is absolutely mind-boggling, if it actually exists. What you're suggesting, thanks to this technology, is that if there's a vastness to this that we're not aware of, not to mention a depth, and that it's totally secret because there was no evidence of this being done. That's right. It's a vast network that runs throughout the entire US from the East Coast all the way to California. What would be the purpose of this? You have a network of underground bases, and then there are tunnels that are connecting them, starting in Washington, DC. No I'm kidding. Yeah. Even if Washington, D.C. is a radioactive wasteland, these guys can still be in charge and in touch with various parts of the military mm -hmm. from these underground bases. I mean, I still don't know if it truly works, but here it is in a United States patent. It's crazy. In theory, this drill could create a massive network of subterranean tunnels and bases in total secrecy. But that's in theory. Could it actually work? I've reached out to the smartest man I know, world-renowned geologist, Eric Drummond. You got it all going on here. Yeah, um, we got a rock here, <laughs> brought in from the field, got a drill here, and uh, we'll do some drilling. I sent Eric the nuclear drill patent, and he designed an experiment to see if it could possibly work. So we're gonna compare basically old drilling versus new drilling. Yes. All right, let's get down to it. First, we'll replicate traditional hard rock drilling, like the kind we saw back at Three Rivers, using an extremely scaled down drill bit and a scaled down chunk of rock. I got a Charlie horse. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Nice. We made a tunnel and we made a mess. Yes, we did. If this was a mountainside and this was a big tunnel, I mean, this is just piles and piles of the yeah. stuff. If you're gonna try to be sneaky about it, if you're just sort of doing it under the radar, yep. this is not the way to go. Right. Now we'll try to do a scaled down version of the nuclear drill that leaves no rubble behind. So what do we have here, Andrea? What is that? It's a plasma torch. We'll fire up the plasma torch to around 2200 degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature of the patented nuclear drill bit. I want to see if that technology can create a tunnel that leaves no evidence. Oh, oh man! That was almost too easy. That's amazing. I mean, it went right through yeah. that rock, and I don't see any kind of debris around it. Look how clear that is. Yeah, that's the glass. the glass. What impressed me was Andrea went through this in mere seconds. Exactly. Like that. It took us, I don't know, 20 <laughs> yeah. minutes to do with yeah. a conventional drill. So there you go. I mean, that sells it pretty well to me. You can scale this up very easily, in my mind anyway, that this could create massive tunnel systems in a, a fraction of time yeah. with no debris. I mean, out of sight, out of mind, you could be doing this all over the place, yeah. as long as that, <laughs> that technology exists. Yeah. I mean, that's the leap. Assuming that a nuclear drill has been developed, then we've got our answer. And that basically proves it right there. Yeah. It's no secret that the U.S. government has underground facilities they built during the Cold War. It's a nine megaton bomb, which is equivalent to nine million tons of TNT. But some people believe the U.S. has a secret underground that's much more expansive than we know. It's a vast network that runs throughout the entire U.S. 
1972, the government bought a patent for a nuclear drill that would allow them to dig underground spaces incredibly fast and without anyone knowing what was happening deep beneath the surface. It went right through that rock in mere seconds. But here's the big question. Why would they do this? And what would this secret underground even look like? To find out, I'm headed to West Virginia. Hi, Don. Wow. How are you today? This place is amazing. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> it dazzles the eyes. That's right. That's right. Welcome to the Greenbrier, a five-star luxury resort in White Sulphur Springs. It's still grand, but back in the day, this was one of the premier places. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This hotel was a hot spot for celebrity weddings and high society types. But for years, it had a big secret hiding beneath its shiny exterior. <clears throat> to find out what it is, you need to go over 700 feet into the ground. The Greenbrier was built in 1913, but in 1948, the resort entered into an agreement with the United States government and a new construction began. The hotel would add another wing, complete with new rooms and an exhibition hall. But meanwhile, underneath, the government would covertly construct a secret fallout shelter for high-ranking government officials that no one in the public would know about until over 30 years later, when in 1992, a journalist exposed the secret. This humongous two-story bunker is the length of two football fields, extending 718 feet deep into the West Virginia countryside. You come out, which just looks like regular part of the hotel. Sure. But then it turns out. Well, there you go. Now this looks like a nuclear bunker. <laughs> so this is the door that protects it all, huh? Yeah, 25 tons of uh, steel and concrete. That's impressive. So this is the Cold War, let's say the Cuban Missile Crisis happens, huge emergency event. And they would show up at this place, right? And they're stashed in here for an indefinite period of time. And at that point, they're sealed shut. Oh, yeah. Well, this would be a very, very bad day. Insane. All right, so this is where you really get a sense of the scope of this operation. Yes. yes. This is the part that the government had exclusive control over. Beyond that big door, only people with top-level clearances would be allowed in by the U.S. military who controlled the facility. This tunnel leads to a complex that would house more than 1,000 people for over six months. The bunker had 18 dormitories crammed with bunk beds. Just room after room along with a power plant with purification equipment, three 25,000-gallon water tanks, and an infirmary. How many people were going to live down here? 1,100. Interesting. I mean, they didn't know about this plan. They were just told at the very last minute, sorry, this is where you're going. Come with us. Yes. Ooh. My lord. Wow, what's this place? So if somebody had been exposed, you take your clothes off, and they go in here and they're gonna burn it. Okay. And then, all you need is high pressure water to just wash that off. It's like a car wash. <laughs> exactly. And then this room had all the supplies, so everybody's gonna be in fatigues. To imagine coming down to this level of wearing fatigues and, you know, quite a shock to the system, psychologically. Yes, yes. They're not with their families. Right. They're worried about their health. Right. Uh, everything precious has possibly been lost. Uh, who knows, maybe the country is occupied at right. this point. Right, that, that uncertainty. You don't really know what's going on out there. It's quite an amazing situation to imagine. Yes, it is a terrifying scenario. Yeah. It's refreshing to know that smarter people than myself have contingencies worked out. 
for even the most devastating of circumstances. But who exactly was this elaborate shelter built for? Oh, that's amazing. Look at that. There are hundreds of seats in here. There are 435 seats in here. 435, the amount of? The House of Representatives. There you go. All right. So this is for the Congress. Yes. And then there's a smaller room on the other side for the Senate. This was an emergency relocation center for the legislative branch of the federal government. This was one component of the continuity of government program. At the onset of the Cold War, President Harry Truman signed into law a program that directed all branches of government to form an emergency plan in case of nuclear attack. He ordered each branch to prepare a secure location that would permit the continued operation of government in a time of crisis. So the separation of powers is behind this whole thing. Even right. in the face of nuclear disaster, right. the US government still has to be maintained as the structure that's in the Constitution. Exactly. So the story of this place is really a hiding in plain sight in, a, in the biggest sense of the word. For sure. And right under everyone's nose, this bunker remained a total secret for over 30 years, until 1992, when at the end of the Cold War, it was decommissioned and declassified. But it's a glimpse into how these underground facilities are designed and the government's anticipation of their need, emergency or otherwise. And given the revolutionary advancements of science and engineering over the last 70 years, maybe even with nuclear-powered drilling technology, what would the secret nuclear facilities of today look like? How advanced? And how much more massive could they be? From underground nuclear missile silos, test sites, and bunkers designed to move the entire government underground, there's already an underworld right here in the U.S. But how many sites are there? To find out, I'm meeting up with Todd Harrison, who analyzes the defense budget every year. Could there be something in the budget that tells us the scope of this secret underground? What percentage of budgets eventually get seen? Very few, actually. But you can see some. If you look at the budget documents today, yeah. uh, you can actually see which line items are going for classified programs. And there's about $50 billion out of that defense budget that is marked as being for classified programs and activities. Some people call this $50 billion secret fund the black budget. Sounds mysterious, right? I actually thought it more likely to be fodder for conspiracy theory chat rooms rather than a reality. Is there such a thing as a black budget? There is, that's the classified budget. It's black, you can't see in there, you can't see all of the details unless you have the proper clearances. You can see lots of interesting code names like tractor rut, a lot of them that begin with tractor. Uh, <laughs> but you can't see precisely what it's been used for. What we can tell is, you know, like 40, 50 years ago, things have been declassified now, and we now know that we were investing a lot of money into figuring out how to build and operate a spy satellite. Interesting. I'm thinking about what's happening underground. Advanced military technology, black or otherwise. Have you ever heard of such a thing as a nuclear-powered drill? I mean, big time drill? I, I have not, but that's not that different than a nuclear weapon uh, that's designed to penetrate the ground before it detonates. We have those. Sure. They could take that technology and through classified programs, try to apply it to the subterranean world. Sure. Nuclear power drills, man. <laughs> Christmas is coming. Maybe. <laughs> could we have spent some of that $50 billion of secret money on a nuclear drill for building a massive underground through other methods? Todd's research may not be able to confirm that just yet. But we are learning that as more and more intel is declassified, it's clear that virtually all black budget spending is for weapons and defense. And while we know that a lot of the military brass in the 1950s had their eyes to the sky, Paul Schar, VP and Director of Studies at the Center for a New American Security, believes the battlegrounds of today are in the underworld. 
How much is tunneling a part of the new strategy here on the home front? The U.S. built underground command and control complexes to survive a nuclear war with the Soviet Union, but the Army's been reinvigorating that for urban warfare. We certainly saw ISIS and Al-Qaeda in Iraq go underground. The Army is preparing for more urban conflicts, and that's going to be something the military is going to have to be prepared for against major threats like North Korea or Iran that have the ability to build big tunnel complexes under these very large cities, very, very difficult terrain to fight in. Paul says that North Korea alone has at least 4,800 underground military bases. And geographically, the United States is almost 100 times larger. So it makes sense that the U.S. would have hundreds if not thousands more underground facilities besides the ones we know about. The tunnels, the undergrounds, have always given a fighting force a, a massive advantage. It's only going to get larger now that it's easier to, to build these things on a much bigger scale. So we've got to be ready. That's right. There's no question that underground is going to be part of warfare in the future. And certainly the US Army has been investing heavily in finding ways to prepare for that. America has always been in competition with both our enemies and our allies. From the space race to the nuclear arms race. If someone else has it, the U.S. wants a bigger and better version. So if other countries are building thousands of bases connected by elaborate underground tunnel systems, it seems obvious to me that we've got a whole lot more than we know hiding in the underworld. started as a look into something that seemed like a conspiracy theory. A network of underground bases and tunnels that are connecting them, starting in Washington, D.C. Led me to learn that the U.S. government has been building underground military facilities since the 1950s. And we're not the only ones. We certainly saw ISIS and Al-Qaeda in Iraq go underground. Russia and North Korea have thousands of underground military bases, and it seems likely that we do too, right under our feet. I've been given access to a military training facility in Indiana that's teaching our soldiers how to fight battles in this new frontier, the underworld. Combat below ground brings a whole new set of challenges, requiring a whole new set of technologies. I'm psyched to see how important fighting underground has become to our modern military. We train for the harshest environment. Yeah. We train for an extreme that may or may not ever happen. Yeah. When new information comes back or tactics change, yeah. we have to be able to innovate and change in a moment's notice. This 1,000-acre facility prepares our military for underground fighting, both abroad and at home, if our enemies invaded our underground spaces and used them against us. It's not just fighting. It's searching for people. Yeah. It's searching for weapons caches. We train for everything. Today, a small unit is running a search and rescue drill. They've agreed to let me live out my childhood dream of being G.I. Joe. Ready for duty. Sergeant, what are we going to do? Our situation we're coming into, we have a casualty in the vicinity of the subterranean complex here. We're going to make entry into the sub-T environment via this east entrance. We're going to locate and extract our casualty. Our enemy situation is unknown. We really don't know what we're getting into, so we're ready for anything. It might be a smooth day. Could be a little hairier today. Knowing many other countries are prioritizing underground warfare, these training exercises help our soldiers learn the new skills and tech they need on the new battlefront. Now, what makes this exercise a test is the crew must safely find and recover an injured civilian in less than 60 seconds. Go, go, go! There could be booby traps down there. So we use things like night vision 
to make sure that we're not tripping over things. In addition to night vision, soldiers are training with a state-of-the-art fighting tool designed specifically for underground warfare. Bat vision, a technology using echolocation to guide them through the dark, the exact same way a bat flies. It has heat sensors to locate booby traps, otherwise impossible to detect in a pitch black tunnel. They're also training dogs to drop supplies from the surface. And of course, using all sorts of top secret tech that my non-existent military clearance prevents me from seeing. Captain Cassidy. Ready. One. All right, mission accomplished. The man is rescued. Great work. <laughs> the strategic commitment to building this underground tracks back to the Cold War, protecting us against this ultimate threat from abroad. Maybe this underground will keep this above ground world safe. We can only hope. Whether or not the US government ever developed the nuclear drill for secret tunneling, we'll never know. But it's clear that governments all over the planet are building a brand new world below ground. And there's every reason to believe the U.S. would be at the forefront of it all. So, does that mean a secret military base exists 200 feet below your house or below the streets you stroll on every day? Sorry, I can't answer that. Or they might have to kill me.